I'm Karen Waltak, and I'm the horticulturist of the Beatrix Fair and Garden Association in Hyde Park, New York. I take care of a garden on the grounds of the home of FDR National Historic Site. If you saw our video last week, you learned a little bit about how the restoration of our Beatrix Farron design garden happened in the early 90s, but I thought it would be interesting for you to know that another historic garden was more recently restored here at the same National Park site. We're going to talk with National Park Service horticulturist Anna de Cordova about the restoration and current management of the FDR home vegetable garden. Hi everybody, I'm Anna de Cordova and I'm so happy that you're able to visit the Newbold's next door neighbors, the Roosevelt's today. Um, they were very good friends and were back and forth from each other's homes routinely uh, through just internal estate lanes and pathways. Um, from Sarah Roosevelt's diaries, we know that they dined at each other's homes, I mean, at least weekly and um, really enjoyed each other's uh, company and neighborliness. So um, the Roosevelt's, uh, had a passion for their garden, um, which was began as um, a hedge garden that included both the vegetable garden and the flower garden and evolved to be um, Sarah Roosevelt's rose garden and flower garden. They moved the vegetables outside the hedge and then continued to expand the size of their produce production until it um, filled the space that you see now, plus some connect connecting land between the hedge and the garden. So they really um, were always on an expansion um, mode when it came to growing their own food. And like the new bowls, you know, nothing could be of greater quality or pride in their house and on their table than things that they grew themselves with, of course, help. Um, the key help being William Plogg, who was their head gardener and landscape manager, and we base a lot of what we grow on um, two lists from William Plogg's pocket diaries that he wrote in 1912 and 1914, which were his summary seed orders, uh, and then we further inform our growing list with um, notes in the Roosevelt diaries and um, uh, household menus and other um, letters to each other about what's happening in the gardens. So, um, but those two lists from William Plogg in 1912 and 1914 um, are very comprehensive and include pretty much any vegetable you could grow from seed in the Hudson Valley and some that are even a little bit challenging. I wanna tell you a little bit about how the garden came to be in the form it is today um, throughout the Roosevelt history, that is the location and basic layout of the garden. A few things have changed. It didn't have a fence for wildlife protection when they lived here, and um, the path services were not accessible. Um, they were just dirt, and the road alignments were slightly different. Um, but the garden as you see it today is um, the uh, reestablishment of what the Roosevelt's had and really tells the story of how they lived here um, through our cultural landscape. Um, it was gone for many years from the property because when the home opened to the public a year after Franklin Roosevelt's death and the FDR library opened to the public at the same time, um, there were tremendous numbers of visitors and the vegetable garden was unnecessary at the time. So that's where the parking lot went to accommodate all of the people who wanted to visit this site. Um, so until we built the Wallace Visitor Center in 2001 and acquired neighboring land to the north, um, we were, and that allowed us to move the parking lot off of the grounds of the Roosevelt Vegetable Garden. And then the task ahead was to raise the money and come up with a plan and really do the um, best and most kind of historically sensitive interpretation of that garden. And we had the wonderful partnership of the um, Franklin D. Roosevelt Hyde Park Foundation to work with us through that process 
and raise private funds for it to come into place. So that was all very exciting and the garden really broke ground in 2016, the centennial um, year and the project was designated a centennial park project um, for, for National Park celebrating our 100th year. So it's very exciting to get that back in place. It took a lot of time and a lot of effort and was just so grateful to park partners um, who really help us get everything done. Um, like the Beatrix Fair and Garden Association, where similarly that beautiful fair and garden wouldn't exist if it weren't for the partner uh, working with the national parks. So we're really rich in friends and support from our community and we're just so grateful for that. I hope we have a chance to do this again when the garden is really full of food crops. Right now we're in the greenhouse and just planting out our earliest crops. In front of me I have uh, Swiss chard and um, beets. Uh, we grow all heirloom varieties that the Roosevelt's grew. Um, we've had great success in tracking down the things that they loved and grew because honestly those have really been heirlooms that people have um, you know carried forward because of their quality um, and so that's here we have a Swiss chard there's a rhubarb red Lucullus is the other Swiss chard that's a green Crosby Egyptian beet a golden beet and an early blood turnip which is a beet not a turnip <laughs> And so right now in the garden, we're planting onions today. Susan McAvery is out there getting that job done. We have lettuce uh, coming up. We have beets seeded, peas seeded, um, radishes, arugula, spinach, all the things that love the cool weather. And we're hoping that in you know a month's time, maybe a little bit less, we'll have some really nice produce to go to Duchess Outreach and their um, markets. Duchess Outreach is another fabulous park partner. Um, they are doing tremendous work uh, feeding our community. And unfortunately with COVID-19, there is such an increase in demand for food and Duchess Outreach is stepping up and really meeting that need. They have always been concerned that people have access to fresh locally grown produce and we're just so pleased that the FBR Hyde Park Foundation, our park partner for the garden, um, donates the pro produce from our garden to Duchess Outreach. And in most years, their mobile fresh market. This year, um, it'll be distributed through whatever the safest means are um, to get this beautiful local produce out to the community. So, um, that's that's where the food goes that's a very that's probably the most commonly asked question in our garden um, we grow pretty much everything when you see how large the garden is you know that the roosevelt's didn't really have to be limiting on what their food choices were and so if it's uh, something you can grow in a vegetable garden in the hudson valley we have it um, our biggest challenges have been just um, getting the garden uh, drainage improved and soil uh, health improved because having been a parking lot for 60 years you could imagine we had um, you know ground that needed to be gained there but a very Rooseveltian ideal to uh, take care of your soil and uh, be soil conserving so we're very pleased that the garden has really made great leaps forward and we're not struggling with um, any major issues on drainage or nutrition anymore and the, the garden soil looks great. Um, we rotate cover crops through the garden all the time. We have a tremendous amount of cover crops planted right now, even things like just peas and oats in the beds that will get tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, things that are planted later. Um, we're just working on soil improvement in the meantime. And we use uh, clover as the um, space between beds so that we're working on soil development while we have a nice firm um, green pathway to walk on between um, cropped beds. So um, I, I could run down the whole list of vegetables, but just um, if, you, if you name it, we probably grow it. And one of the fun things about visiting here when you're able to do that again is just seeing all these wonderful heirloom varieties um, and usually, uh, because they were great gardeners, the Roosevelt's knew to plant 
early and late heirloom varieties of a vegetable, um, multiple different types to protect against losses and pest damage. Um, so really there's a variety even within each vegetable group for the most part. And it's just a really fun array of uh, food. Thanks for joining us for Fair and Friends Friday. If you have questions you'd like us to answer about Beatrix Farrand, our garden here in Hyde Park, or anything else in the gardening world, you can send us an email to info at beatrixfarrandgardenhydepark.org. We look forward to hearing from you, and you can also check out what's happening in the garden live on Tuesdays at Instagram at Beatrix Farrand Garden. Every Tuesday at 10 o'clock, we'll have a live tour. So we'll see you next week.